Hello everyone and welcome to one of the first video of the ORE Academy. If you stumble on this page by pure luck, well, that's a bingo. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. But if you still wonder what ORE is exactly, I invite you to take a look at the two presentation videos available on the YouTube channel. I'm sure you're all excited to start playing with ORE, aka the stuff the dreams are made of, but it does require a little bit of setup to get it working on your computer, so please bear with me a little so I can show you. ORI is C++ based. It's actually built on top of another widely known library called Quantly. What it means though is that you need a few softwares and third-party libraries to get it working and that will be described in Chapter 1. In Chapter 2 I will walk you through how to download the repository from uh, GitHub and how to build it in Visual Studio and in Chapter 3 how to test it. The first thing you need to install is Visual Studio. Um, we're using here the 2022 community version, which uh, you can find for free on the Microsoft page um, following these steps. You can use earlier versions, but um, I I'd recommend using the latest one here. The only additional package that you need to install here is the desktop development for C++. And then you can uh, proceed with the installation. Depending on your setup, that should take between 5 to 20 minutes. It might be worth noting that everything in this video was built using 64-bit um, versions. If your computer is running with a 32-bit, uh, you will have to download and install the corresponding version. The second software to install is Git. Um, now, if you're a developer, you might be very used to it. If you're not, Git is a open source software for distributed version control. Just keep clicking next um, to install uh, everything in default settings. We recommend using the Anaconda distribution packages because uh, it includes most of the features you need when using Python. Um, and Python is needed uh, in our case to run some of the examples or plot exposure distribution, let's say. While installing Anaconda, you might want to add um, Anaconda to your environment pass, but that's only if you intend to have this version of Python your default one. So read the instructions carefully. And it is installed. Now, just to make sure that everything has been set up properly, um, just open a command line. So just type CMD in the Windows research bar. Then try Python, uh, then quit, um, conda, and finally uh, pip. If all is good, um, you can now proceed with installing a few additional uh, packages. The actual command line to install those packages will be displayed um, on the screen now, but you can also easily find them on the documentation which is available on the in the opensourceris.org uh, website in the uh, section Python and Jupyter. Sometimes you might be prompted to answer yes or no, just um, type Y by default. So here's the second one. Just so you know, for the third one, um, it's actually two dash in front of this prefix and not one like it is said in the documentation. Here, the fourth one. And the fifth one. And the last dependency for this um, project to work is Boost. Now you can compile it yourself um, and everything is described in documentation, but you can also just download the release package and this is what we do now. Select the uh, previous or the latest version and then very importantly, um, the one that is matching your Visual Studio release. Uh, you can see the correspondence on the right. So for us here, it's the 180 14.3. Um, 
if your firewall prompts you for a uh, unrecognized app, it's okay, just click on more info and run anyway. Keep in memory where um, Boost is being installed because once it's done, you will need to add um, this pass to the environment variable. To do so, um, look for the environment variable settings in the Windows prompt. Then add the main boost folder as boost. Then add uh, the path to the folder where the lib and the DLL uh, files are contained as boost underscore lib64 or lib32, depending on your computer. Now that we have all the softwares and third-party libraries, um, installed and configured. Let's build our array. And the first thing you want to do is go on the open source risk.org website. Here you will find the documentation page that we mentioned earlier, where the user guide is located and where you can see the steps that we already followed. Then to access the repository, click on view on GitHub and on the repository called enjoy. There is a short uh, readme section at the bottom of the page, but what you want to do is click on the green button called code and then copy the HTTPS link. Then open git bash. By default, the repo will be created in the current user folder, but if you'd like to choose your own path, leave in a moment, um, you can do so by uh, using the cd command with the path to you folder. Then simply do git clone and paste the link that you copied earlier. Here we go. Open the engine repository folder and then scroll down and double click on or everything solution file. And that should open Visual Studio 2022. Select debug or release version. Um, we tend to build both usually and the version that you want to build, 64 or 32. Wait for this icon to say ready while it loads the file. And finally, click on build and build solution. Now, this might take a little while, potentially up to 30, 40 minutes. Once built, um, you should see eight projects succeeded and zero fail. In the last part of this video, we just gonna make sure that everything has built properly by running a series of examples. And to do so, open the engine folder, then the example folder. Copy the path, open a common line, and use the cd command to this folder. Type python run.py, and it's alive, it's alive. You can now explore the result of the calculation, mainly um, the simulated exposure graph, the NPV file, the CVA file, and there is also very conveniently a log file. The last step is to run the whole set of examples. Now you might need to do a pip install data compy. Then come back to the parent folder and run python run examples that suite.pi. 36 examples will be run and it may take up to 15 minutes. Once finished, um, just make sure that some of the outputs are correctly generated. Et voila! You should now have a working version of ORE. In the next video, we'll explain the role of each input file and how they interact with each other. So stay tuned, we'll be back.